So one of my viewers wanted me to talk about the human eye, the optics of the uh, human eye. No, not cow eye, but uh, human eye. I think people know what they look like on the outside, but let's take a look at what they look like on the inside. Uh, here's a simple diagram. Uh, there's the cornea, which is the outside of the eye. Uh, that's the surface. Uh, there's the iris that opens and closes that regulates the amount of light that can go into the eye. Uh, behind that is the lens. And then there's this big kind of void. It's full of a fluid um, that keeps the eye pressurized and keeps it round. And then in the back is the retina. Um, and there's blood vessels that feed all of the uh, cells in the retina. And all of the uh, rods and cones and all that stuff is on the retina. And they all uh, go into nerve fibers and go back to the visual cortex of, of the brain. Now the image sensors, the pixels in your eye are not evenly distributed in your eye. There's actually more of them in a place called the macula. They're actually, you have higher resolution in about a two degree field of view. And then as you go away from the macula, they become more and more sparse. And uh, most of the color vision is in the macula. Uh, whereas the rest of the eye is kind of more black and white. Um, although, you know, there are a little bit of color sensors everywhere, but most of the color vision is in that two degree center field of view. But uh, we're not going to talk about color today. We're going to talk about the actual just focusing of light inside the eye. Now here's a, a simple diagram of what we're going to be looking at. There's, uh, again, the cornea on the, on the left. And then the lens sits there in the middle of the eye. And you can imagine the lens is like a gummy bear. It's a clear gummy bear. And the way that you focus near and far is that there are muscles that are attached to this gummy bear. And those muscles can pull and stretch it. So they can pull it and make it thin, or they can relax and they can make it fat. Um, and that's the way your eye does autofocus. Um, it, 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 it can focus. Now, you have great ability to focus your eye when you're young because it's very the gummy bear is very gummy and as you grow older by the time people re reach age 40 it's basically not gummy anymore it's kind of hardened and that's why you lose the ability um, to focus and most people need reading glasses when they get to the age 40 and above it's because you can no longer stretch that uh, lens uh, anymore it's no longer gummy and here's just a close-up of that ciliary muscle uh, that can pull on 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 the lens, and uh, it it sits there over on the on the side, uh, so it's it's out of the way. All right, so uh, we're going to be taking a look at a computer ray trace program called ZMAX. This is kind of what the uh, uh, real optics engineers use. There's there's other programs. There's Code Five, which is what the big boys use. Uh, a lot of the Japanese companies who who make uh, lenses and stuff, they they have their own in-house lenses that are um, their own designs. Um, and then there are there are uh, several other packages that you can buy. But uh, Code Five and ZMAX are kind of the big ones. Um, and Code Five is quite expensive, so uh, not too many people will use that platform. Uh, most of the mid-grade kind of guys like me <laughs> used ZMAX. So yeah, we'll take a look at uh, look at this. So uh, here's ZMAX running. Uh, let's see here. Let's open up a file. Close this. So the way that you enter data into an optics program is with a spreadsheet. So this is a spreadsheet and um, somebody has done this, I didn't do this. Somebody had done a model of the human eye. And uh, we can just kind of look a quick look at this. There's, there's surfaces. So as you move across the lens, well, let me show you the lens and I think that'll make it more obvious. So let's go here, uh, go from one. All right, so this is what we're going to use as the model of the human eye, all right? Let me run some more rays into it. It'll look better. Okay, so this curved section over here at the right-hand side is the retina, right? The, the eye is round, so even though this has some square parts in it, you can imagine this whole thing is round. Uh, but this is just the usable 
this is what you need uh, in order to do the ray trace. You don't need the rest of the eye. So this roundy bit here at the back is where the light gets focused onto the, uh, onto the retina. And uh, then you have the lens here in the middle, and then you have the uh, cornea on the front, all right? So if you think about this as surfaces, there's, a, there's an initial surface, and then a gap, and then another surface, and then a gap, and a surface, and then a gap, and then a surface, and a gap, and then a big surface, and then a gap. Um, and, and so we're going to describe surfaces, all right? So let's close this. So these are the surfaces. There's going to be um, eight surfaces and then an image plane. So the first surface is at infinity. So that's we're focusing at infinity. And so light's coming from infinity. And then we're going to have uh, some plane that's going to be 10 millimeters away from the eye. Okay. And so when I did this ray trace, I started at surface number one. This is a surface zero, which is infinity. So that's the light coming into the eye. The eye is really, really tiny. You can't see it. So if I go here from surface one, now you can see the light entering entering the eye. Let's go back here. I shouldn't have closed it. Um, so that's surface number one. And you can see it's in red. As we go to surface number two, um, then you can see that there's a curve that's surface number two that's red. Now surface number two is the cornea and it's labeled here, cornea. And then there's a bit of fluid, aqueous, and then there's the pupil, and then there's the front of the lens, and then there's the back of the lens, and then there's the vitreous humor, which is in the center of the eye, and then there's the retina, which is the image plane, okay? So each one of these is a surface, right? So let's start with the cornea. It has a particular radius. Well, the radius of a cornea, a standard human eye, would be 7.77 millimeters, right? And... Um, its thickness would be 0.55. That's the thickness of your cornea. And then it would have a refractive index. The refractive index is 1.38. And the, uh, the Abe number of the refractive uh, dispersion is 50.2. So that's just the amount of color variation, uh, the way that it bends colors. So you don't have to worry about that right now. And then it has a semi-diameter, which is the radius. They call it semi-diameter. They call it radius here and semi-diameter here. It's just the way optics people talk. And then conics is, if it's not a spherical surface, it's a conical surface. So if you don't have it perfectly as a radius, but it has a conic section, that's a, a square term, you know, y equals x squared plus, you know, then this has a conic. It has a slight curvature to it. Then the aqueous comes in. It has a radius. It has a thickness. It has a... Uh, index of refraction that's a little bit different. The cornea was 1.38 and the aqueous is 1.34 and it also is a bit conic. We go to the pupil, which is just a, 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 a limitation of where the light comes in and it has a particular um, radius as infinity. It's just, a, it's just a plane that has a hole in it. Um, the front of the lens has a radius of 12.4 and the lens is um, 1.8 uh, 1.6 millimeters thick um, and it is if you notice what happened to the index of refraction it's gone well it's it's got to be a special thing it says gradient here at the very beginning these were standard surfaces this is a gradient surface gradient surfaces says that the index of refraction is not constant in that lens it actually varies and it varies with all of these numbers back here okay there's all these numbers that we can't see i can scroll over um and uh, you can see here um these numbers in the back, delta T and zero, and these are all polynomials that describe how the index of refraction changes. Um, so the base index is 1.368, but then it changes depending on the radius and distance and stuff. Um, and then the back of the lens has a different gradient. It has an index refraction of 1.4. It also has a polynomial associated with it. And then we get into the vitreous humor, which is 1.3 and 1.34. And then we go, okay, so anyway. So that's how you model an eye. That you have to type all that in and figure out what everything is. And then it takes that data and it draws an eye. 
And here it's, 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 it's drawn an eye. And, um, we can show this a bit differently, I think. Um, let's see here. It's been a while since I've driven this program. Uh, 3d layout. Uh, usually optics engineers don't care about 3d stuff. This program can display it in 3d, but, um, it um, it's not extremely important for optics people. Sometimes it is, but it's very, very rare. They mostly work in just simple diagrams like this. I can't figure out how to uh, how to do the three D thing right now. Um, so um, you can see that the light is focusing on this curved surface uh, on the back of the eye, and we can actually. Uh, do calculations. There's there's uh, these things called uh, optical path differences. You can, if you're an optic engineer, you know what these mean. There's a ray fan, uh, which is similar. From these graphs, you can look at distortion. You can look at not distortion, but you can look at uh, 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 astigmatism. You can look at coma. You can see those things in these graphs if you're if if you're trained. Uh, MTF is is how much resolution a lens can develop. It's a, a percent modulation in frequency of spatial white black white black lines that cycles per millimeter. That's a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, I'm not going to teach you guys optics, um, but what we can do. What we can do is do an image simulation. All right, so this is what a grid of lines would look like when it went through the eye. And you can see that there's distortion. When the image hits your retina, it's not rectilinear, it's not square, because you have a curved film plane kind of you see a distorted image. Now your brain has seen that all your life, so it doesn't see the world distorted. It corrects for this, but in actuality on the retina, it is distorted. But let's do this. There we go. So here the program has taken a, a bit pattern and has mathematically cycled it through this lens. And, and looked at the resulting image at the retina. And so this is what you would see if you lo looked out and, and mapped the, the, uh, the retina. It is, it is distorted. It's kind of a fisheye lens, right? And uh, yeah, that's what we have inside our retina. And you can see that it's pretty well in focus because the, um, because of that curved film plane really, really helps. The curved image plane really, really helps having, having that curvature there. Anyway, a brief introduction of optics. Um, I did this for, oh, how many years of my career? 20, 30? <laughs> a long time. At least 20. Uh, I did nothing but optical ray tracing and stuff. Um, there's various types of optical ray tracing. This is called a uh, sequential ray trace. There's other ray traces that are called non-sequential. Um, this one... Um, Pre-calculates a lot of stuff when it does the uh, calculations. The sequential, uh, non-sequential ones are just basically Snell's law. They bounce rays around in. It's a lot like what you would use to render graphics in a computer game. You would use a uh, some type of program that bounces light around and, and and makes an image. There's a lot of similarity between the gaming, you know, the 3D rendering type um, uh, software and and real optics software. Um, they're similar, but yeah, there's like you like you know you look at you look at these uh, 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 ways to take a look at different types of data, um, and uh, another thing that these do is um, you can set up a uh, um, you can set up something that you want your lens to do, and then uh, you can set things here like you can say okay i don't quite know and i can set this as a uh it says it's fixed right now but you can solve it you can say i'm going to make this a variable 
and now this radius is a variable. And then you can, can tell the computer a whole bunch of other stuff, and you can say optimize, and it will go and it will change this value of this radius to make it better. And it's up to you to write the software. It's called a merit function. You create a bunch of numbers that you said, I want these numbers to be better. And then it changes whatever you set as a variable, it changes those things to make it better. Um, and there's a lot of, uh, a lot of black art. So, um, if you get one of these programs, I see so many people get one of these programs and then they think they, they think they can design lenses. Um, and they can design, they're really, really good at designing lenses that are completely unmanufacturable <laughs> and are complete garbage um they work on paper but yeah they're just complete garbage so there's still a lot of art involved in lens design um, computer programs have helped tremendously um, but there's still a whole bunch of art in uh, manipulating these things to do what you want them to do all right well i hope that gave you a brief introduction to the human eye and how the rays go through it and a little bit about how the uh, lens focuses <laughs>